What's going on guys? This is Vince with vshred.com and today I'm going to be showing you guys five different arm exercises that are going to build up the peak of your bicep. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to be showing you guys different exercises that are going to help build up what is known as the peak of the bicep. But before I get into the specific exercises, I just want to kind of break down uh, the biceps for a second and then we'll get into those. Um, so when it comes to your biceps, it's called a, the biceps for a reason. Bi meaning two, there are two heads to the bicep. So if you look down at my arm right here, um, you can kind of see how right there there's a little indent. And then down here you can see a, a, little, a little longer bit of a muscle. And that's because right in the middle here is where the two heads separate. So you're going to have your inner, and this is going to be the short head right on the inside. And then you're going to have the outer head, and that's going to be called the long head. Now, when you are talking about building the peak of your bicep, you have to, you have to understand where that's coming from. And if you look down at the bicep, the peak is going to be from the outside, which is going to be the long head. So in order to work the peak of your bicep, you have to work the long head. Now, how do you differentiate your training between working the long head and working the short head? And that comes down to really, I mean, obviously the exercises that I'm going to show you here in a second, but um, why do these exercises work better, work one head better than the other? Well, you got to understand, I've talked about this before in past videos, um, the origination and insertion points of muscles. And obviously you work a muscle by shortening and lengthening it, putting a specific muscle into what is known as a biomechanical advantageous state and then also putting in the other muscle into a biomechanical disadvantageous state um, so when it comes to your long head of your bicep or when it just comes to your biceps in general both of them come down and they're going to insert into what is known as the ulna it's one of your two forearm bones the outer bone of your forearm so it's going to come down insert right down in here and then it's going to run up and it's going to, they're both going to insert into the front of your scapula right up here. So what you have to understand is that one of them, so while they're both going to be inserting down here, they're both going to be originating up at the scapula, but the one, one of the heads runs a little differently than the other. So the inner head, the short head, is going to run literally straight up your arm on the inside and just insert straight into that. The long head on the other on the other hand is going to insert down here at the ulna and it's going to come up here it's going to actually wrap around this little groove on your shoulder bone it's known as the bicipital groove and due to it wrapping around that little or basically just sitting in this little groove and then inserting into the scapula or originating from the scapula that makes it possible to put that specific bundle of muscle fibers into an advantageous state in order to work it and now when it comes to trying to do that you also have to understand what the function of the shoulder is because when it comes to so you have shoulder extension and you have shoulder um, flexion now when you are bringing your arm forward this is your the, the long head is going to assist in bringing your arm forward so if, you're, if your long head is going to assist in this movement right here, that means that the long head is going to be slightly shortened, which means it's going to not be at the advantageous state. So what? So if it's, so if it's at a disadvantageous state right here, how are you gonna put it into an advantageous state? And that is just by doing the complete opposite by putting it behind your body. So this right here is basically taking the muscle, the muscle bundle starting right here, running up your bicep, running around this groove, and putting it into this a deep stretch when your arm is behind your body. That way, when you're curling, you're gonna be hitting more of your long head than your short head. Now that's one way. The other way is when it comes to biceps, it, this one's a lot simpler to understand. When you're working your biceps, what you can see straight, like you guys are looking at me right now, what you can see, like let's say you're looking in the mirror, whatever side of your bicep you can see, that's what side is typically going to be being worked. So let's say you're doing a wide grip barbell curl just like this if you can see your short head you can see that inner head of your bicep and you're curling like that you're probably you're going to be working that short inner head now if you have it the other way around and you're doing let's say a close grip easy bar curl like that 
then that and then so that basically means that your outer head is going to be being shown your outer head is going to be being worked so i want to show you guys five exercises that you can do from here on out if you're struggling with developing the peak of your biceps so that you can really start getting that to pop so the first one i'm just going to sit right down here on this incline bench now the reason it's on the incline like i said in order to work that long head you want your elbows back behind your body so the first one is going to be an incline bench dumbbell curl just like this now what you don't want to do when you're doing this curl right here is you don't want to curl this weight up and follow it up with your elbows because then you're going to get to the top and first off if you're directly to the side of me my hand is directly above my elbow which means it's resting my bicep is no longer being worked right there it's more so my shoulder but also if i bring my elbows forward they are now in line with my body and that my long head of my bicep is no longer in that stretch so what you want to focus on is keeping that elbow locked in that same position back there so while you curl up make sure you are keeping it back there curl up get that squeeze at the top go back down and then one other thing that you can do that i like to do is let's say you're doing this perfect form curling it up you're going back down and then right down here you, you're about to go into your next rep, but you, you lose tension for a second. So what you can do instead of doing that is just stop right before you lose tension. Curl this back up, keeping your elbow in the same spot, peak contraction, back down right before you lose tension, go back into the next one, making sure that you are keeping your elbows back behind your body to put that long head into a stretch. So that's gonna be the first one. So the second one, I'm just gonna stand up using the same weight. This one's going to be a drag curl. Some of you guys know a drag curl with a barbell. I personally like doing it with uh, dumbbells. That way it doesn't necessarily have to stay in front of my body. That way I can really focus on driving my elbows back as I curl this weight up. So when you see a regular dumbbell curl done, you see your elbow in that same position. You see the weight curling forward and up. You see it just like that. With a drag curl, seeing as how the emphasis here is your elbow going to be being back when you're in that peak contraction, instead of curling forward like that, you're actually going to drive your elbow back while bringing this weight up and it's going to end right there. You're going to go back down, driving your elbow forward right before you lose tension again, you go back into that next rep. So the drag curl is going to look just like this. And really focus on getting that peak contraction with your bicep, driving those elbows backwards, bringing this weight up right along your body. And that's going to be the second one. All right, third exercise, and this one again is going to be implementing arm extension with your arm coming behind your body. And then the other two, we're going to get into inner kind of curls with your long head showing. Um, it's going to be a single arm cable curl. You're just basically going to get a cable, put the attachment down to the bottom, and then you're going to step away. You're going to face away from the cable that way. And the farther you need to go to make sure that your elbow stays behind your body, go for it. If you need to be 20 feet that way, don't recommend that, but um, you get the idea. So you want the main thing here, keep your body straight up and down, keep your elbow way back behind your body and keep it there the whole time. And when you curl this weight, you really want to focus on driving your hand. So it's very easy to curl this weight and just kind of pull with your shoulders a little bit. You want to focus on keeping your elbow in that same spot while almost driving your hand down towards the ground and then up. So it's going to look like this. You're going to have your elbow way back there driving it down, keeping your elbow in the same spot, squeezing out right there, back to starting position, keeping your elbow back in that spot, up like that, and it'll look just like this. Really focusing on squeezing that outer muscle, elbow sitting back. That's gonna be the third one. Now we're going to the fourth one. It's just gonna be, I'm gonna grab a easy curl bar. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's just the one that goes like that. As I mentioned, well, with an easy curl bar, you can either grip it super wide, kinda wide, or inner. And like I said, when it comes to your biceps, whatever head, whatever side of your arm is showing, that's gonna be the head that's gonna be being worked. So if your arms are out, you're gonna be working your short head. If your arms are in, you're gonna be working your long head. So easy way to implement this is grab this easy bar on the inside make sure that your elbows are staying out what you don't want to do here is bring your elbows in like this and curl up and end up looking something like this 
Instead, what you want to do is really focus on elbows staying out here, keeping them in that position, curling this weight up, really focusing on, if I look straight at you, my arms are coming in, well, my, my elbows are wider than my arms at all times. What you don't want to do, like I said, is bring your elbows in to where they're in the same spot, and now it's just kind of a straight arm curl. So instead, elbows out, arms, your hands are coming in, curl this weight up, really, and if you even want to bring this, your hands farther in, you can do that. Just don't hurt your wrist here. Curl this weight up, really focusing on squeezing your bicep. Another thing, if you want to take your uh, curls to the next level, just go twice as slow on the way down than on the way up. There's a tip hidden inside of this video. It is like that. Keeping those elbows out, showing almost like you're trying to show the outer arm to the mirror, just like that. So that's gonna be the fourth one. And the fifth and final exercise is going to be known as a dumbbell crossbody curl. So it's gonna be the same concept with showing your outer arm here. That way you can work that muscle. And again, what you don't wanna do is pull your arm too far forward to where you're curling and you're almost like, your arm's almost in front of your body over here. You really wanna focus on keeping your elbow in that same spot, but turning it inward and curling it up like that. And that is going to work that outer head. And you can do these alternating, where you're going like this. I don't necessarily like going back and forth because when you're going back and forth, my left arm right there is resting for a second, my right arm right there resting for a second. And it's also allowing you to create momentum by bringing it forward like that right there is momentum so instead if you were to go hold it there curl up back down curl up back down i'm already feeling a much better burn in my bicep than if i were to alternate just like that all of a sudden i have momentum coming and my arms are like one two seconds rested every single time i do that so cross body curl is gonna be the last one so there you have it, five exercises that you can do if you're struggling with developing the peak, the outer head of your bicep. Um, you learn a little bit about the form, learn the different exercises that I would recommend. If you guys are looking for more tips for your fitness goals, if you're looking for tips that are gonna help you burn off some fat, build muscle in the areas that you're trying to do it, and how to do it probably more efficiently than what you're doing without spending hours and hours a day at the gym, I created a physique builder tool that basically matches you up with the plan that's right for your body you just answer a couple of questions about what your goals are what you're struggling with and then it also spits out a video at the end with three more tips you don't have to pay for anything and then after that it recommends which of our 90-day programs that i've personally written complete 90-day training and nutrition program at the end of that and we got a discount running right now so if you want to check that out you can click the link in the description below this video if you have any questions um, if you have any videos that you guys want me to make, leave them in the comment section. Also, please make sure you're clicking that thumbs up button below. Uh, if you learned anything, and then last but not least, make sure you're clicking the subscribe button down below. That way you're not missing out on any future videos. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.